Well, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to show you my four favorite JPEG recipes, monochrome only for the time being, for my future film cameras. I'm also going to show you how to set those JPEG recipes up in your camera, but also how you can do it in Fujifilm Extra Studio 2. We'll go through the recipes first and I'll show you plenty of images and then afterwards I'll show you how to set up these recipes in your camera and also using Extra Studio. So newspaper is the first of the recipes we're going to look at and this is probably my favorite one. By the way, you can see more of these recipes, including color ones, by heading over to my website. I'll link to it above and also down below. I've got an entire dedicated section to JPEG recipes for Fujifilm cameras. Now, for the newspaper, in the 1970s and the 1980s, black and white newspaper photos held a distinct and iconic visual style that shaped how people consume news. The limitations of printing technology of that era influenced the appearance of these images. Typically, photos were produced with a half-toned dots, transforming grayscale images into tiny black dots on a white background. The varying density of these dots created shades of gray, making a distinctive gritty texture that was a hallmark of black and white newspaper photography. These photos were often high contrast, meaning the dark areas were intense and the highlights were starkly white, giving images a crisp, bold look. Due to the relatively low resolution of newspaper printing presses, the detail captured in these photos was limited compared to modern digital photography. Yet this unique aesthetic had its charm and became integral to the newspaper reading experience. The visual character of black and white newspaper photos from the 70s and 80s is now recognized as a nostalgic and enduring symbol of the era's journalism and storytelling. For this X-Trends 5 sensor JPEG recipe, I have set the film simulation to Acros plus yellow filter, the grain effect to strong, the grain size to small, white balance shift I've set to red minus four and blue minus three, Highlight tone I've set to plus four and the shadow tone to plus four, sharpness plus two and clarity zero. Now, of course, all of these settings are base level ones and you can adjust them to your own taste. The next one we're going to look at is one that I've titled 50s Noir and it's actually a bit of a spin off from the newspaper simulation that we've just been through. Now, the 50s Noir style of black and white imagery is a cinematic and photographic genre that emerged post-World War II. Its distinctive use of high contrast lighting, deep shadows and a sense of brooding atmosphere characterizes it. The styles often convey a mood of mystery, suspense, moral ambiguity, that kind of stuff, with narratives typically revolving around crime, deception, complex characters. Film noir in both movies and photography frequently features sharp angles, stark compositions and a gritty urban setting creating a visual world that mirrors the disillusionment and uncertainty of the times. So there you go. Now the Fujifilm JPEG settings for your camera for this one is film simulation, Acros plus yellow once again, grain effect strong, grain size large, white balance shift red minus three, blue minus three, highlight tone plus four, shadow tone plus four, sharpness plus four, and clarity plus one. Now remember, if you set clarity to anything other than zero in your cameras, you will notice a lag as the camera tries to process that. So your mileage may vary on whether you want to choose to use the clarity or not. Now, the next recipe I've called Imai after Masazuma Imai. And Masazuma Imai is a design manager in product design for the X and GFX series of digital cameras at Fujifilm. After graduating from Tama Art University, he started his career designing film cameras, binoculars and small printers. And in 2002, he joined Fujifilm Corporation and beginning with the first generation Finepix X100, as it was called then, which he designed and released in 2011, he's been significantly involved in the X GFX series ever since. And he's won over 100 international design awards. Now, I consider Masasuma-san a friend, really. Uh, I've met him several times in Tokyo and Dubai and various other places. And at one of our last meetings, he kindly signed my original Fujifilm Finepix X100, uh, which I will always, always treasure. 
So uh, as a thank you to him, I suppose, and to all the other brave men and women at the uh, X-Series embryonic start at Fujifilm all those years ago, this film simulation is in his name. And your settings for this one are Acros plus red, rain effect weak, grain size small, monochromatic color WC1 MG0, white balance shift red will be minus one, blue plus one, highlight tone minus one, shadow tone plus 2.5, sharpness zero, clarity plus one. And the final Fujifilm recipe I'm going to talk to you about today is one called HP4. Not HP5, but HP4. Now, Ilford HP4 was a popular black and white film produced by Ilford Photo. It was part of the HP, which stands for Hypersensitive Panochromatic Series, which began with the HP1 in 1935. HP4 was introduced in the 1960s as a successor to the earlier versions, offering improved sensitivity and finer grain. Now, the JPEG recipes for this simulation are Acros Plus Red, once again, Grain Effect Strong, Grain Size Large, Monochromatic Color, WC-1 MG0, White Balance Shift Red Plus 3, Blue Minus 2, Highlight Tone Plus 2, Shadow Tone Plus 2, Sharpness Plus 1, and Noise Reduction Minus 1. Now, of course, all of these JPEG settings are ones that I use. I'm about to show you how to set these up in your camera and using XRAW Studio if you so wish. Part of the reason I think that we love Fujifilm cameras is because of this ability to create these filmic looks in camera. But there's also nothing wrong with taking those JPEGs into Photoshop or Lightroom, if you so wish, and manipulating them further. It's entirely up to you. So all of these JPEG settings I'm giving you are a starting point for you to set up in your camera and hopefully have some fun and create some beautiful images. Now, it would be remiss of me not to mention that I have released my new 2024 they were released in december 2023 lightroom advanced presets which i will link above and below also you can still you can still get a 20 percent discount with the code yt24 there is all kinds of goodness in those presets and if you do not shoot jpeg but you shoot raw please take a look at them and i hope you like what you find okay let's go through the camera settings to show you how to do this so and on this menu, the image quality menu, you will see edit, save, custom settings. And in there will be all of the ones that you've recorded. So here are the ones that I've set up myself, HP5, MI, 50s Noir, etc. You can go to edit, check and see what those settings actually are. Now, at the moment, all we're doing is going through those settings and seeing what they are. We're not applying them to the camera itself. You can also edit the name if you so wish. If you want to change it from MI, you might want to change it to something else if you've changed the setting itself anyway. That's entirely up to you. Also, to actually switch it on, you need to go to the Select Custom Setting menu and select the one you wish to use. So newspaper in this case. And so now it's telling me I'm using Custom 6, which is my newspaper one. And if I look back through the menus now in image quality, I will see all of those settings, the sharpness, the Acros plus yellow film simulation, all of that stuff, the grain effect, strong, small, all of that will be here at this point because I've selected it in the custom setting. Now, here's a little tip. I always have one of my function buttons set to the custom setting. So I can assign, I assign the function button at the top there to custom setting, which means I can just very quickly press that function button on my camera. This little menu will pop up in my EVF and I can select my settings from there. You'll also see the setting in the Q menu. I bring up the Q menu. You can just see it there, right top left hand side. Of course, you can customize the Q menu, but if you use custom settings, it makes sense to have them there right at the top and you can just rotate through them with the command dial on the back of the camera. Now, if you find going through the edit custom settings menu within the camera itself a little bit tedious, you can download the Fujifilm XRAW Studio software completely for free. It's very simple to use. I actually have a video all about this piece of software, which I'll link to, of course. And here you can set up your own custom settings, just like we've talked about 
but within this software interface. Now you do have to have your camera connected to your computer by a USB cable. And the reason for that is because all the processing actually happens on the camera. It does not happen on your computer. So it needs to connect. So you can see here that we've got all of the custom settings. I could just click on one and it's just going to apply that to a particular image. And if I want to edit those custom settings, make them a bit more refined or a bit more personal to you, then you can just adjust those settings here on the right hand side in the menus, click save, and you can then apply that to any of the custom settings slots in your camera. Now by default, they will just say C1, C2, C3, etc. As soon as you hit save, it's gonna ask you for the name that you wish to give it, whatever that may be. You can't use certain characters, but the moment you press save, it's going to fire that up the USB cable and in your camera under the select custom menu settings option, you will see all of these available to you. Very, very useful piece of software, completely for free. I'll link to it below how you can download it. And if you shoot JPEGs and if you're interested in creating your own recipes, I'd say that XRAW Studio is a must have piece of software. That's it. Enjoy. Have fun. Until next time, take care.